the physiotherapist will say, I'm here to teach you how to stand. Those are words that are very powerful, painful words, you know. So when I was 27, I was in shipping line, maybe close to 15, 16 years. He wanted to have what it's like to have bigger cars, bigger house. When Rolex was readily available, like he just go and buy anything I want. So at that point, the, the chase was different. We had money, but what we didn't have was the peace and blessings. I met a very old man once and he came to me and he said, I know your grandfather. And he was one of the very, very rare people who would offer poor people like us food. So it was a big deal back then, I guess. So by the time I, before I turned 44, that was in 2014, then I realized that this is what I want to do. Lah. If you were to ask me what is my concern with regards to food security, uh, it's mental health. They come hand in hand. One time I bought granny, and then my son was doing the keto diet. Uh. He just came back, hard day at work and everything. Uh. He was feeling so cranky, you can see from his face. Then I told him, one granny, you know, hey, he's like, no, I got granny, I'm on keto. Then five minutes later, I saw that he took the granny and he... Then he told me, daddy, oh my God, daddy, that's what I needed. <laughs> I just needed some granny. Studies have shown that if you eat well, if you feel well, if you're mentally well, the chances of your children doing well is so much higher. You cannot have a mum who's trying to feed four kids with just six sausages, sambal and rice. And Professor Tio Yu Yen told me, Niza, by the time a Malay student from low-income family turns nine years old, they more or less have a understanding that they will never amount to anything much. And we want to change that. It started from uh, that mission. If you think about it, uh, it all starts from food. Uh. It was supposedly to be a three months thing. Eh? And then I realized that three months didn't end, that there were more to do, more people to meet more concrete walls to break down. I don't take a salary. You know how painful it is not to take a salary and to be on call 24 hours? I just... It was a, it was a hard time for me. Uh, the, you know, some family members choose not to see me thinking that I'm going to talk to them about donating. And those that I thought I would get support ended up making it difficult for me. Those that supported me now were those that were not close to me before. But because salary was not the, the one motivating me, I still could go. Lah. There were still fumes in, in the body to, to move. So during this period of time, especially how do you make sure to take care of yourself? I didn't. That's the sad part, I didn't. Um, I just wish that I had taken a different approach. I might have not been where I am today. But then again, what's the use of regretting? It's, uh, we hope that this message can go to other people experiencing. In June 2018, I came back from Perth and we only booked the flight where we had extra leg room, you know, we paid for it. But when we were there from Perth, they said, sorry, we had sold your ticket somewhere else. So you had to sit wherever you are. It was so small. So by the time I came back, the left leg just like cannot move, cannot move. And then went to the wheelchair, so I said, okay, maybe this is just the effect. Then I started losing the feeling in my feet to the extent where standing up, I cannot stand already. That led to a fall, and that fall cracked a bit of my femur. Then I had my amputation two years ago. So after the amputation, because I was bedridden for 21 days, and that was, huh, where did my legs go? You know, it was very demoralizing because you cannot, the simple things also cannot do. You know, to a simple extent where the physiotherapist would say, I'm here to teach you how to stand. 
those are words that are very powerful, painful words, you know. Can you just imagine, I've been standing for maybe 48 years. It's really surreal, the, the fact that standing up gave me a problem. Was there a point that you felt like you wanted to give up on your work at FFA because of your physical condition? No. It was the easiest thing I've ever done. To want to do more for FFA, no-brainer for me. The first time that heal stops you from doing whatever you need. Take a break, but don't stop trying till you overcome. I like to see YouTube videos and keep myself educated. I play lots of games. You're on the last mission of this particular game and you keep dying because you just got no enough power, right? You just got to keep on boosting, boosting, boosting till one day you will come out. I want to be able to grow FFA, not only locally but regionally, so that it can be a beacon of light and a source of hope for everyone facing food security. Yeah.